So Mitzi, um, it's COP26. They've had 25 COPs. Exactly. And they haven't managed to get us anywhere near, away from the disaster yeah. line. Tell me a little bit what it's like to come to these conferences when this is just one event and you're spending the rest of the year doing the hard work. So what do these events mean in, in an activist's life? One of the most important things I see in these events is having people coming together from across cultures and across countries and across movements and using this unique opportunity that we're all here together in person to really connect and build those bridges and build those connections because that's how you build climate justice by connecting with other people that you haven't worked with before but also it's such a crucial moment to really come together and pressure world leaders because they're here right they're right here in front of you sometimes walking along the same street as you and that's the time when you really have to just go hey we're here, you need to listen to us, we need to do action right now. So you were with the United Nations Secretary General yesterday. Um, did you throw your hands up in the air and wave like, what are you doing? You're not listening. Or did you construct a very, very well arranged argument for the reasons that should, um, climate justice should be at the top of his agenda? I'm assuming the latter. <laughs> he is actually really like on the same page as us. He's also really there in making sure that we're fighting alongside people and making sure that 1.5 degrees Celsius is still on the table and that we fight for that. I would say there needs to be a little bit more pressure on world leaders especially. Right, so because you activists are always told you're impractical, you're idealistic, yeah. you're, yeah. Not, you're not part of the real fabric of what's going on here. You know, all the negotiations are happening and, and but you guys are sort of the picture, it's what the media wants yeah. to cover. Yeah. Is that the reality of what you're experiencing or do you think that actually activism is finally paying dividends? I think activism is so important because it's what scares world leaders into acting. Right. Like without activism in all forms, not just the ones on the streets, but also the ones who are lobbying, also the ones who are talking to the, the politicians. This is what gets people to act. And we need all forms of activism so that we can push world leaders towards the right direction because they're not listening. And, and are, you, are you the idealist or are you the pragmatist? I mean, the world leaders will always say, ah, well, you know, it's really hard and we've got to think about the coal mines and the tech giants and yeah. the world, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you fight? And are you just like, I mean, what do you say to that, that you are the idealist and they are the pragmatist? Well, my question is, why is it idealistic to fight for our lives? Why is it idealistic to ask for basic human rights? Really, we're just asking for them to finally listen to the people in the planet and to prioritize that over profit. And what, yet we're being called radical. We're being called radical and we just want to make sure that no one is compromising on our lives and that no one is left behind. Do you think that I mean, the climate justice issue has really come to the forefront this year specifically, I would say. There seems to be a lot more conscious effort to make sure we have different voices in this discussion. Is it tokenism? I think it's a shift in the narrative and it can turn into tokenism really easily. Have you become a token? Not... Have you experienced it? <laughs> yes, I oh, have. Oh really? Oh no. Um, if it's not careful, if we're not doing it in the right way, if you don't know how to redirect the attention in the right way also, you can become a token really easily. World leaders will take a selfie with you and be like, oh, I've listened to the youth. I've listened to the people of color. And that's not what we need. That's not what we want. If we want this to not become tokenism, if we want this UN Climate Summit to actually do something, it has to go beyond inclusivity and go beyond re representation and actually listening. So tell the, the viewers of this right now, tell them how to not be a photo opportunity like you have been. I mean, that must be so just heartbreaking to see, but how, how do we avoid that as, as activists, as those people who either directly or indirectly want to be part of climate justice conversation? You just have to make sure that you're very clear with your message mm -hmm. that when you want world leaders to act, that's what you say. And you call them out when they're doing things like this. You call them out when they're being tokenistic. You call them out when they take their selfies and don't actually listen to you. And at the end of the day, what matters is it, it doesn't matter if you have a meeting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you get to sit down with them. What matters is they listen to you and they act. I love that advice. You don't need to be in a meeting room or a negotiation table to be heard. Is exactly. that what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. I, I mean, 
you, you're very, very wise for your age. I sound like such an old lady now. <laughs> but you're very wise for your age, and I'm sure there's a lot of experience that comes with it. Do you make sure that you're looking after yourself, your mental health? Because you're, you're sick right now because you've been working nonstop for two and a half days. <laughs> I know this. But, but how do you make sure that you're looking after your own well-being? I like to put like very clear boundaries with myself. So I tell people, I tell media, if I don't want to do any more interviews, that's it. I'm sorry. And especially because there are so many of us here that you can talk to. It doesn't have to always be me, right? And I think like the capitalist profit oriented mindset that the system has brought upon us is that you have to constantly work yourself off. Yes. But in that sense, rest is actually resistance because we need you in the long term. We need you to be able to fight this long fight that we're fighting and to do that you have to take care of yourself. So in a way, taking care of yourself is part of activism and that's how I view it so that I can force myself to take care of myself because it's part of my duties as an activist. But you're also not taking the day off. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is what activism is. It's giving great advice and taking only some of it. Um, what are your hopes for this COP? I know that you haven't been to any of the negotiation tables. I mean, you, you can walk in, right? You yeah. can go and actively see yeah, this. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. But you, you want to go to these negotiations. Why? I want to hear firsthand how these world leaders are betraying us. I want to see firsthand how they slap our faces with all these empty words and promises and see how we can build pressure around that so that they change their minds. This is opposition research. You're, <laughs> you're going there to see how they are how treating they yeah, uh -huh, exactly. about you, about activism. <laughs> um, what is the one positive thing that you think is going to come out of this? What is the one solution you're hoping will come out of this? It's not really hope, it's a demand and an expectation. Right. We need drastic carbon dioxide emission cuts and we need reparations from the global north to the global south so that the global south can adapt and manage with the loss and damages that we're already experiencing. All of this and more has to happen at this UN Climate Summit because people are already suffering the climate crisis today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking to Thank me, Thank you so much. <laughs>